everyone and welcome to July's Photography 201. And this month your assignment's going to be multiple exposures. Oh, I know, this is probably going to be a bit divisive. There are, there are two camps on multiple expo exposures. Useless and interesting. We're going to split the difference. We're going to create a third camp, which is useful. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about how to make multiple exposures useful. Because if you scroll through any of the image sharing websites, you're going to see multiple exposures that are like, hey, here's half my face and it's pointing in different directions. Oh. Okay. You're also going to see things where it's just a person or some subject overlaid with something in the background. I have done many of those as well. There's a Another, and those can be really good from a creative and captivating image perspective, but there is a third class of multiple exposures. The useful multiple exposures, where you do something like set up your camera. I'm going to photograph this building. Sunset is in 30 minutes. The sun is over here. I'm going to get a photo of this, cam of this building in full sun so I can get the light and the, the, the colors of it in full spectrum light. In 30 minutes, I'm going to take another photo of it in sunset so that that sunset can, can the lighting from it can affect and influence the way that the image looks. I'm going to try to capture some of the clouds of sunset in that image. And then I'm going to take a third photo of it after dark when the lights are on. And so what will happen is that if you take a, that first photo being a very underexposed image, the second one being the primary amount of your exposure, maybe say 75, 65 to 75% of your exposure. And then the rest of that third image being enough to really make those lights pop, maybe even your longest exposure by time, because it's after dark, what's going to happen is you'll get a building that has the natural colors of daylight or the detail from daylight at any rate, the colors of the sunset with the clouds in the background, and then your lights being on inside the building. That's a technique large format architectural photographers in the film days used, and they used to do that stuff with slide film. I'm not good enough to do that. It's very, very hard. So um, at any rate, there's a lot of skill in doing a photo like that, but it demonstrates that multiple exposures can in fact be highly, highly useful in creating images that have an appearance and a look that couldn't be created easily. Stuff is of course much easier to do in post now. Uh, anyway, let's first explore what a multiple exposure is not. This technique is not taking multiple images in post and then combining them as overlays. Don't just take a bunch of your random photos and stack them. That's not a multiple exposure. Multiple exposures require planning and execution to create a single image with intent. This technique is one where you intentionally combine two or more scenes at the same time the image is taken to create a composition of multiple photos in one frame. What do I mean by that? You have an image over here and an image over here. Maybe they're separated by a few minutes or a few hours or a few days, whatever. But you're intending to combine this image and this image as an overlay. You are specifically taking them for that purpose. Okay. The photos will overlap and the results will be based on how light and dark and color interact. That's the point of the multiple exposure, to use tone and color data in your frame to your advantage to create a specific result. Okay. So, so for this assignment, don't combine photos and post if you can avoid it. Instead, set up to intentionally overlap images during capture because that will teach you how to recognize ways in which different tones and colors interact and how to think beyond the composition of just a single photo. Now, if you are setting out to take three or four or two or however many photos specifically to combine them, 
and your tool for that is a photo editing software, then yes, you can, you can do that. That would be fine. But, but the point of avoiding doing this in post is to avoid saying, here are three disparate photos that I took on their own, didn't really intend them to go together, but let's put them together and see what happens, okay? So I'm hoping I've hammered that home enough. So multiple exposures. Plan these. Don't just do them ad hoc based on your library. Take the images this month with the intent of creating a multiple exposure image. Have fun with it. Sure, definitely go, go for it. Have fun with it or try to tell a story. That example I gave you of the architectural photo, where you're capturing the lights and the sunset and all that, that's telling a story. Okay. You could, you could use a multiple exposure to capture slices of a, of a scene over the course of a day or a week or something like that, telling a story. So there are multiple ways to do this, but the key to it is to plan it and take it with intent. So drop me an at on Instagram with your results or preferably on Imgur. And uh, I look forward to seeing what you guys put together. And I will see you in a month with the August assignment. Have fun with the multiple exposures, guys.